committee will come to order. The, the first order of business is a vote on ranking member Raskin's motion to insert a document in the record. Uh, all those in favor say aye. If you vote aye, you support Raskin's motion. If you vote nay, you oppose. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no, no. The the motion fails. I, I'd like to ask for a recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. The clerk uh, will call the. The clerk will call the roll. Yeah. Right. So a yes vote means you support Raskin's motion to insert a document in the record. No means you oppose it. Clerk, call the report. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Turner, Mr. Gosar, Mr. Gosar votes no. Ms. Fox, Ms. Fox votes no. Mr. Grothman, Mr. Grothman votes no. Mr. Cloud, Mr. Cloud votes no. Mr. Palmer, Mr. Higgins, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Biggs, Mr. Biggs votes no. Miss Mace, Miss Mace votes no. Mr. Laturner, Mr. Fallon, Mr. Donalds, Mr. Perry, Mr. Perry votes no. Mr. Timmons. Mr. Timmons votes no. Mr. Burchett. <coughs> Ms. Green. Ms. Green votes no. Ms. McLean. Ms. McLean votes no. Ms. Bobert. Mr. Fry. Mr. Fry votes no. Ms. Luna. Mr. Langworthy. Mr. Burleson. Mr. Burleson votes no. Mr. Waltz. No. Mr. Waltz votes no. Mr. Raskin. Aye. Mr. Raskin votes aye. Ms. Norton. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Connolly. Mr. Krishnamorthy. Mr. Khanna, Mr. M. Fume, Ms. Acasio Cortez, Ms. Porter, Ms. Bush, Mr. Gomez, Ms. Brown, Ms. Stansbury, Mr. Garcia. Mr. Garcia votes aye. Mr. Frost. Aye. Mr. Frost votes aye. Mr. Kassar. Yes. Mr. Kassar votes yes. Ms. Crockett. Yes. Ms. Crockett votes yes. Mr. Goldman. <laughs> Mr. Goldman votes aye. Mr. Moskowitz. Ms. Talib. Ms. Talib votes yes. Mr. Chairman. I vote no. How, is Mr. Fallon recorded? Mr. Fallon is not recorded. Nay. Mr. Fallon votes no. Is Mr. Sessions recorded? Mr. Sessions is not recorded. I vote no. Mr. Sessions votes no. Will the clerk report the tally? Okay. How, how is Ms. Porter recorded? Ms. Porter is not recorded. Ms. Porter votes aye. How, yeah. How is Ms. Uh, Mr. LaTurner recorded? Mr. LaTurner is not recorded. Mr. LaTurner votes no. Will the clerk please report the tally? How, 
How is uh, Ms. Norton recorded? Ms. Norton is not recorded. Ms. Norton vote. Okay. Yes, I assume. Yes. Okay. Ms. Norton votes yes. How is Mr. Burchett recorded? Ms. Norton votes yes. Make sure Mr. Burchett is not recorded. Mr. Burchett votes no. And how is Ms. Luna recorded? Ms. Luna is not recorded. Ms. Luna votes no. And how is Mr. Moskowitz recorded? Mr. Moskowitz is not recorded. I'm I'm Mr. Moskowitz votes yes. Okay. Will the clerk please report the tally? Mr. Chairman, on this vote, the ayes are 10, the nays are 19. Okay, motion fails. Now, the question is on the amendment offered by Mr. Goldman. Does anyone else seek recognition? Will you go and yield? Chairman. The chair recognizes Ms. Green. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to talk about the importance of Hunter Biden obeying his subpoena and uh, some of the evidence that we had questions about today when we, when we had arranged with Hunter Biden and his attorneys for him to come in. Uh, then he evaded his subpoena, and there's serious evidence that needs to be discussed. Um, that, that has to do with many of the bank reports that we had read in the Treasury um, outlining very serious crimes that Hunter Biden uh, had committed or has allegedly committed, and then we have evidence of that. Uh, crimes of Man Act violation, human trafficking, these were in the bank reports, and the American people deserve to know about it. Uh, here's another excerpt from a, a bank report Mr. Chairman, what, what is talking about a victim in order? California. Uh, uh, I uh, hold hold on time. one moment, Ms. Green. What state's your point, Mr. Goldman? What, what is uh, the gentle lady just showing to the cameras? This is her five minutes on your amendment. Well, if it's the suspicious activity reports, there was an agreement with the Treasury Department that uh, the committee would not disclose the information. It's, it's my understanding what she's uh, showing has already been disclosed in the public long before we started this investigation. So this is in the public domain? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that your representation? Is it a verbal representation? It's in the public domain? This is in the public domain. Uh, I reclaim my time. Uh, victim one is a California resident uh, currently employed with FSS management between June 2018 and October 2021. Victim one, Hunter Biden's victim, was employed by a Wasco PC as evidenced by her receipt of bi-weekly payroll remittances from a Wasco PC. However, during this same period of time, victim one also received large round dollar wires from a Wasco PC which referenced new hire, K wage, 10K golf member, and pay. Victim one received five wires totaling $44,508 in a four month period between June 12th, 2018 and October 2nd, 2018. These are reports that are calling so-called uh, employees of Hunter Biden and his law firm victims. And here's evidence of Hunter Biden violating the Mann Act. This is trafficking women across state lines for prostitution. Uh, this is an airplane ticket uh, showing that it was, and it was purchased by Hunter Biden uh, for this victim where she flew from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C., and then the next day flew uh, back to Los Angeles. The date is uh, she flew in from Los Angeles on June 14th, 2018, and was flown back to Los Angeles um, the, ver the following day. And this is pictures that Hunter Biden had produced and uploaded to porn websites. And it's marked Mr. out. Mr. Chairman, point These of parliamentary inquiry. Out point, showing point proof of, inquiry, uh, Mr. Chairman, proof of I Mann think, Act okay. violations. Uh, um, Democrats should, should they, not they, be okay. offended by pictures uh, Chairman, that black out. Have I been recognized? They should be Objection. offended by trafficking. 
Mr. Sorry, Chairman, I state your point. Thank you kindly, Mr. Chairman. On July 26, I sent you a letter about the last time this happened when the gentlelady uh, introduced uh, before this committee, without any notice to uh, anyone, uh, nude photos, pornographic uh, images that were completely irrelevant to the purpose uh, of the hearing itself. And uh, my question to you is, are members allowed to simply put up sensationalistic, voyeuristic, pornographic images if they're not relevant to the actual object of the legislative proceeding? But, I want a parliamentary ruling well, on that. Mr. Raskin, that's probably part of the questioning for for Mr. Biden, violations of the Mann Act. Ms. Green's led on that issue. No, no, this is a, these a question are already, about the rules these of the committee. Already, these pictures have already been entered into the record. So in other words, you have accepted the idea that members can introduce irrelevant, I sexually based, how, how, is this, how is this irrelevant? Well, well, how does it relate I, to Joe Biden? How, is, how does it relate to... Uh, We're not doing well, a criminal investigation of Hunter no, Biden. No, we've, had, po we've point had of order, Mr. Chairman. Point of order. testified in the yes. FBI, DOJ, Okay. Uh, IRS that they were told to stand down investigating various crimes of the Biden family. Okay. Did Joe Biden tell them to stand down? Who told the IRS, the FBI, and everyone else to stand down? This is what we're investigating. None of reclaiming my time. Reclaiming my time, Mr. Chairman. I, I believe uh, it's my time. No, I'm reclaiming I, no, my I time. Have been right, wait, I've wait, been recognized. I object. You're, you're I object to the use of this exhibit. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is not a criminal investigation of the Mann Act or prostitution or anything else. It's completely irrelevant to a subpoena, the validity of that subpoena, uh, and whether or not there's been compliance with that subpoena. It's totally extraneous, immaterial, and irrelevant. But, and someone should explain that to Ms. Green if she doesn't point, understand. Point of this parliamentary is, inquiry. And, and let the chair it. rule. You, yeah. you had a point of order. The chair's rule. I this object. Is evidence. This you objected. We got that. Evidence that Honor is a material witness in this investigation. Well, does now, that mean you can put up pornographic pictures of uh, other people that Hunter Biden has met in his life? I mean, come on. Like, how far does that go? It's not relevant to your motion. Well, you can ask him that in, it, in the it's deposition. It's not relevant. I mean, no, honestly, Mr. Chairman, it's not relevant to your motion of whether or not he violated that subpoena. How do those naked pictures have been Mr. Doing? Chairman, point of order. This is not the Jerry Springer Mr. show. Point. This is the United States House of Representatives. And, and, and let me Come say on. this. Let me say this. This is not that pornography. Relevant. It's appropriately censored evidence in an ongoing investigation. Yes. Okay? It's appropriately censored evidence in an ongoing investigation. Censor, Mr. Mr. Right, I just want to say, pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 17, I object to the use of this exhibit as irrelevant, extraneous, sensationalistic, wireistic, uh, and totally antithetical to the legislative purposes of this committee in this House. This is not the Jerry Springer show. Yield back. Chair recognizes Mr. Biggs for a point of order. Thank, We're thank still, your, your clock stopped, Ms. Green. Yeah, my, my point of order is to, is to is and I appealed the ruling of the chair. If that was a ruling, Mr. Chairman, did you rule on it? Because I, I appeal your ruling. So, so I was recognized for my point of order, Go ahead. and I get it. He wants to have an appeal. So, but uh, I, chair I'm trying to keep this in order as much as we can, Mr. Chairman. It, my my question is to you: Is now the objection based on relevance going to be uh, encountered here and constrain? what can be presented in this committee. And the reason I ask that is because there is virtually nothing. I, a comment I made in the press about it, and it was totally tangential to this, that they just tried to get in. All of that becomes irrelevant. Is If that's the case, then the entire Democrat testimony that we've heard today should be stricken as being irrelevant. I, I, uh, no, I, I think you're... Irrelevant and pornographic. We're going to have a ruling. Mr. So, Ms. Green is attempting to enter this into the record, you know, it's consent. Mm -hmm. Mr. Raskins has objected, Ob objected, uh, and we're going to vote on it, just like we voted on the last amendment. Clearly, they defend all women, don't they? Except women. Yeah, the, Hunter Biden the, the, the ruling is the point of order will not be recognized, and Ms. Green is in order. If, if you want to object. Well, yeah, I, I, I object. And Mr. Chairman, you have the authority to bring to the full House under Rule 17 whether or not pornographic material should be entered and, and without again, a clear show of relevance. And I would ask Mr. you to Chairman. bring that to the floor of the House. Let, let, let the members of the House decide whether that's the new standard, whether the, 
Mr. The Chairman, the Marjorie Taylor Greene standard my, is going to be the standard for the whole House. The quorum is within discretion of the chair. We overruled your objection. Okay. And I appeal that. You appeal the ruling of the chair. Yes, I do. I would like so to. We're vote. going to vote on that. We're going to vote on the pornography. May I finish? Hold on. Mr. Mr. Gosar, you're recognized. I move to table the motion. Okay. Motion to table the motion that uh, of Mr. Raskins. This motion is not debatable. As many as are in favor of tabling, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the yeas and the motion, uh, the, the yeas have it, and the motion to table is agreed to. The committee will now resume. Mr. Chairman, I, I would move for a recorded vote. I mean, if that were a book, she would censor it, but she wants to advertise it through the House of Representatives. Vote is ordered. A recorded vote is ordered. If, if we're going courtroom, speaking the, objections don't work, Chief. The clerk will call the roll. Uh, you'll clock, call the roll. If you vote yes, you table the motion. So, clerk, call the roll. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Turner. Mr. Gosar. Mr. Gosar votes yes. Ms. Fox. Yes. Ms. Fox votes yes. Mr. Grothman. Yes. Mr. Grothman votes yes. Mr. Cloud. Mr. Cloud votes yes. Mr. Palmer. Mr. Palmer votes aye. Mr. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Higgins votes aye. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Sessions votes aye. Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mr. Letourner. Mr. Letourner votes aye. Mr. Fallon. Mr. Fallon votes aye. Mr. Donalds. Mr. Donalds votes yes. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Timmons. Mr. Timmons votes aye. Mr. Burchett. Aye. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Ms. Green. Aye. Ms. Green votes aye. Ms. McLean. Aye. Ms. McLean votes aye. Ms. Bobert. Mr. Fry. Aye. Mr. Fry votes aye. Ms. Luna. Aye. Ms. Luna votes aye. Mr. Langworthy. Mr. Burleson. Mr. Burleson votes aye. Mr. Waltz. Mr. Waltz votes aye. Mr. Raskin. No. Mr. Raskin votes no. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Lynch. No. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Connolly. No. Mr. Connolly votes no. Mr. Krishnamorthy. Mr. Khanna. No. Mr. Khanna votes no. Mr. Mfume. Ms. Ocasio-Cortez. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Ms. Bush. Ms. Bush votes no. Mr. Gomez. Ms. Brown. Ms. Stansbury. Mr. Garcia. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mr. Frost. Mr. Frost votes no. Mr. Kassar. Ms. Lee. Ms. Lee votes no. Mr. Kassar votes no. Ms. Crockett. No. Ms. Crockett votes no. Mr. Goldman. Mr. Goldman votes nay. Mr. Moskowitz. Mr. Moskowitz votes no. Ms. Talib. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Chairman. Chairman votes yes. Mr. Chairman votes yes. Will the clerk please report the tally?
Mr. Chairman, on this vote, the nays are 15, the ayes are 21. The yeas have it, and the motion to table is agreed to. The committee will now resume consideration of the Goldman Amendment. Ms. Green has two minutes remaining. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and again, this, this information is extremely important because Hunter, ba Hunter Biden refused to obey his subpoena, and we are holding him in contempt of Congress for doing so. This is important evidence of human trafficking, man act violations, that, that we had questions for the president's son about. And there's evidence, I'd like to show the evidence of payments. These are payments made from Hunter Biden and his law firm to so-called assistants. These were not assistants. These are prostitutes that he was trafficking. And I think these victims are important. And just because our Democrat colleagues don't like the evidence, doesn't mean that it's not relevant. And for, for I'm, I'm especially offended by the women on this committee that don't care about these women's rights. They're victims of Hunter Biden. Here's another excerpt from bank reports talking about victims. These are banks. And these banks are identifying these women as victims. Victim two, they eat, talking about victim two, victim one, each appear to be in the adult entertainment industry and are receiving payments from Hunter and Owasco PC. It is unclear what relationship Hunter or Owasco PC have with these individuals. And based on public media, it appears possible the payments may be associated to prostitution or adult entertainment services. Victim two is a New York resident and employed as freelance. Per internet research, she is a social media influencer and adult entertainer. She received six quick pays for $6,250 from Hunter between 3-29-2018 and 11-20-2018. This is clear evidence, Mr. Chairman. These are important questions we have for the president's son pertaining Time. to Man Act violations. Time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, just a point of order. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want right, to right, interrupt right. the good lady, but um, two points here. One is the majority has purported to be in possession of the laptop, and you're supposed to share all evidence with us. We've been asking for a year. Will you make the laptop available to the Democrats so we can look at it? The guy who originally apparently leaked it, he said he can't vouch for anything they're talking about because he doesn't understand the chain of custody. We don't know who, who made those pictures. We don't know who made those statements. If it's coming from the laptop, we don't know where it's coming from. So please, could you please share with us I, what you've got? If I can interject, I, I can okay. give you an, a copy of it. Marco Polo has the actual entire publication. We can get every single Democrat member a copy of that. Well, I, I want to get at least the copy that the majority is using. I don't even know what Marco Polo is. It's, it was, I will get you. I promise. Like, I'm not trying to be rude. I will well, get you a copy. You mentioned you wanted to read some stuff. That would probably be something good to read, the Marco Polo report. But, 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 but what about your copy? Because you know you have an obligation under the rules to share with us any evidence you it's claim public. to have so as far as we know it's all that stuff record. is completely confected it's just well, made you, up it's it, with all due respect mr Raskin, you yeah. spent a lot of time investigating the former president and you haven't spent any time on this the american people are keeping up with this investigation. we want to investigate but you all Share are three this. or four steps behind give us the evidence so miss green's time okay miss green's time has expired does anyone else wish to speak on the goldman amendment mr, mr. moskowitz uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, again, just to reiterate the point, but I, 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 rather than my words or my opinion, uh, you know, I, I think I'm going to quote Senator Ted Cruz, who the chairman appeared on his podcast. And in fact, just to remind the chairman of Ted's own advice to the chairman, I made a board for you, Mr. Chairman. You were on the show with Ted Cruz, in which Ted Cruz said to you, I'm going to give you some unsolicited advice. Now, by the way, Ted Cruz, right, clerked at the Supreme Court. He knows the Constitution pretty well. But you guys know who Ted Cruz is, right? He's run for president a couple of times. Uh, so Ted Cruz said to you, Mr. Chairman, you should have Hunter Biden in a public hearing. He actually said his advice to you is just have him in a public hearing. And, and again, I go back to, I go back to what, what is the majority so concerned, or to use some of the words of my colleagues, afraid 
to have Hunter Biden sit at this desk. Mr. Chairman, you control the rules. You could give everybody 10 minutes. You could get everybody 15 minutes. You could get everybody 20 minutes. You, you could give your side as much time. We could go on for days here, quite frankly, because again, you, you control the rules as you just showed. But the, the one difference that you, you guys object to is you object to those. You object to the cameras because you don't want the American people to hear the answers. No, you want to take the transcript and release it six months after you've gone out and lied about what has happened. And so, again, because the, the gentle lady from, from the gentle lady from Georgia, uh, I know is such an advocate for women's rights, as she mentioned, uh, and is so concerned uh, uh, about grooming. And apparently, we, we don't have any standards here anymore. Again, I, I just want to remind remind my colleagues because you know I, I don't want them to forget about hypocrisy okay I, I don't want them to forget about hypocrisy but you know Donald Trump was asked about Jeffrey Epstein and when he was asked he said you know Jeffrey likes him young well, how did the president know that how did he know that Jeffrey Epstein likes him young perhaps some people are saying he was there since you're so concerned Right, but again, again, I, I bring this up not, not to make jest. I bring it Point up. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I bring it up. Uh, okay. I thought we weren't going to interrupt. Uh, uh, we're going to stop the clock. We did this with Ms. Okay. Green. Take your point. Yeah, uh, I, I'm just curious about the impugning of the former president's character. That we. we I don't we, have to do that. He does that himself. Have we, have we, uh, basically throwing that rule out. I'm just curious, uh, or are we going to follow that Would rule? you accept a pornographic photo? Of Bill Clinton? Yeah, we suspended the rule to the current president, but it, we didn't suspend it to the, for, to the former president. But. Oh, by the way, please, so you're making the point that we can right, disparage right. Joe Biden, but not Donald Trump. Please make that point to the American people. Mm -hmm. Please. And I, Bill Clinton's not running for office. I. I that's my point, All right. order, Mr. Chairman. All right. We uh, I'll, I'll wrap we suspended it up. the rule on the disparaging the the current president because this is a contempt proceeding with the with the Biden with the Biden. So he's part of the investigation. But but the, the but the rule remains in place for both all I, prior presidents. I would I would say that, but uh, in all honesty, they've broken the rule many times today. Mr. Okay. Chairman, it, Mr. it doesn't apply to prior it's presidents. Not, it does not apply to former. Okay, right, okay. very good. Thank L you. Listen, I, I don't. I won't talk about the photo and the 11 of them and the fact that he was on the plane and on the island anymore. What I will point out is the hypocrisy of today. The hypocrisy of today is you want to hold, you, you, guys break a, you guys break the rules by not complying with subpoenas in the last Congress, and now you're shocked. You're, you're, you can't believe after you broke all of that that now it doesn't work. You come up here and talk about Hunter Biden's behavior, and you're so disgusted. But the guy that you all kneel to, okay, associates himself with a pedophile. But remember, I, I get Mr. it. Chairman, I, 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 Mr. Chair. I, I, Mr. Chairman, that should be stricken. I ask his words taken down. A statement of a fact, and it's his time. It's a, it's a fact. There's, I ask his words to be taken, taken okay, down. Okay, there's a motion to take the, strike the words. Yeah. Yes. Oh, on what grounds? On what grounds? To it, say that we it, associate with it, pedophiles. Right. No, no, he was referring and, and to Donald Trump. No, 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 I said Donald Trump associates. just associate. said that we all kneel. I kneel to Christ. I stand for the flag. Support. And if you're concerned I'll, about I'll, pornography. I'll change my, I'll change my public, word to support. Mr. 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 Ranking Mr. Member, you might look to no, the library. Fair point. No, okay. That your people support. So you're referring to the kneel down. Donald Trump said that I someone moved for his knee, words so, to be taken down. And I think he withdrew uh, it's that. It's a motion. I withdraw my knee. He, he withdrew it. He withdrew that. That'll so, be I'll, taken I'll be, from We the have to accept him withdrawing it. All right. Everybody good? That's going to be taken from the record. Okay. I withdraw the kneel down. I'll use the word. Very much support. We we okay with that? No snowflakes offended. Okay, wonderful. Uh, the, anyway, back to the point, Mr. Chairman, is that I just think the American people are tired of the hypocrisy, right? They're just tired of it because what they've recognized is when Donald Trump does something, it's just fine, but when someone else does it, it's a crime. Time. And time again, what, you think the Chinese stayed at his hotel because they didn't have another choice? 
You think he wanted to have the G7 at Doral because Doral is the best property in America? Come on, you guys are smarter than this. You know he was trying to make himself rich, but when Donald Trump does it, when, when Donald Trump does it, when, when Donald Trump does it, it's just, it's just fine. But when a private citizen you claim does it, it's a crime. You guys don't have any credibility. You might have credibility on the Charlie Kirk show, but you don't have any credibility with the American people anymore. You just don't. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Chair recognizes Mr. Mr. Burchett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd ask for the uh, last word to be stricken. Okay. Do what? And, We're good. and I'd like to uh, yield to Representative Timmons. Okay. Thank you, my friend. Um, I want to correct the record. It seems this entire hearing, we're chasing all of these logical arguments that r really don't have any merit. And earlier, before we uh, recessed, we were discussing the uh, ranking member's uh, 7.8 million in foreign payments from at least 20 countries during his presidency. And I knew the answer. I knew that that was revenue. And it wasn't actually profits. Hold on, I'll, I will let you ask questions at the end of this. And you said, did I read the report? And so I did. And in the report, it actually specifically says, these uh, included payments from foreign governments and foreign government owned or controlled entities to properties owned by Donald Trump, including Trump International Hotel in DC, Vegas, Fifth Avenue. And this is my favorite. Trump World Tower at 845 United Nations Plaza in New York. So let's just use that one alone. Because if you go down to page 20, uh, footnote 23, it actually clarifies where this money came from to include the amount of money. And so what y'all did is you took a building that was built in 1999 and completed in 2001. And you have, it's 100 yards from the United Nations. So these foreign countries owned uh, multi-million, 10 million, 20 million dollar condos in one of the nicer buildings in New York. And I was just kind of shocked because I knew that you were using revenue and you weren't using actual uh, profit that the president or the Trump organization made. You actually used HOA payments. Do you know how <laughs> duplicitous it is for you to use HOA payments on a $20 million condo in New York? Like, it is outrageous. It, no, 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 you can, I, I'm going to go through. We're going to go through all of them because you list them, you list them. And I see Saudi Arabia, $615. $422,000 Trump World Tower. And you go and you look, there's nothing there that is under $10, $12 million. So you're taking a $12 million property that was owned since 2001, and you're saying that this is somehow similar to Hunter Biden running all over the world and selling the big guy's influence? These are completely different things, and the fact that you even created this report and you're using it to shield us pursuing justice to make sure that this president is not compromised because his son has sold secrets to China, to Ukraine, is so disingenuous, it's so duplicitous, it's not even mis misrepresentation, it's a lie. I'm happy to hear this from you because, again, you told me to go read it. I read it. That's what it says. I can read you in footnote 23 where it says, this report uses common charges or rent payments. All of these properties were owned prior to 2018. They didn't go out and purchase them because of the president. They were there for decades before this happened. That's the point. That's the difference. Okay. Uh, well, with, the with the gentleman yield, we have a good story. With, with Absolutely. The, with the gentleman yield. Thank you, my dear friend, for engaging in substance and not ad hominem attack. I very much appreciate that. Having said that, um, some of the payments, you, first of all, you said that there are lies in here. Can you find one factual inaccuracy? So There's not for, one. For you to in tell fact, you're quoting us. You're for quoting, you to, for you you're quoting us. But, but, let, me, you, but let, me, for, let me make this point. Let me make this point, which is that I, I, China I gave $5.5 it's, 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 it's Mr. Timmons' time. It's Mr. Timmons' time. For you to tell the American people that $7.8 million went to President Trump is an outright lie. It's a fabrication. It hold on, hold on. I, and I'll tell you exactly why. Because you're using, benefit, you're using businesses that existed decades prior to when he became president. And you're saying using, all of them? Hold on, hold on. And you're using HOA fees for multi-million dollar properties that have been around since 2001. And again, even the fees that they pay for hotel rooms, that is a fee for a, a product, for a service. There's no service with Hunter Biden other than influence of the vice president or the president of the United States. And that is why we are here, because he will not answer questions in the exact manner that you have required for last Congress and the Congress before that. I, I mean, it is difficult to chase all of your logical fallacies surrounding this, but at the end of the day, he's gonna do exactly what Don Jr. did. He's gonna do exactly what you required of every other member, except every other person you've subpoenaed, except for members of Congress who actually do have uh, immunity, which you're pretending like you don't know what that means. Um, we need 
to get to the bottom of this, the American people demand it. Mm -hmm. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Excellent. Mr. Does any other member wish to speak? You wish to speak on the amendment? Yes. Ms. Stansbury is recognized for five minutes. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just quickly before I speak on the amendment, I do want to address the assertions that were just made about this report and the receipts that have been provided about the funding that came into various properties and businesses owned by Donald Trump while he was president. Um, to address the inaccuracy put forward by Mr. Timmons, if you go to the source material, which is the actual receipts from Trump International Hotel, other hotels in New York. Yes, there are condo fees. Um, there's a number of different businesses, but it's very clear that there was influence peddling going on. So for example, there's receipts. Will the gentlelady yield? No. Uh, there are receipts that show the Malaysian government between September 10th and 13th was spending $10,000 a night, butler service, personal trainers, lavish meals, at the same time that they were meeting with Donald Trump and the media reports from the time say that they discussed their stay at Trump's hotel in the Oval Office. So this is just not true. Um, another one, UAE, uh, during a military delegation visit in March of 2018, they were negotiating a, uh, a arms package with the, uh, with, with the White House at the time. Okay. They dropped $85,000 at Trump Hotel and were discussing their stay at the hotel while they were negotiating the arms package. Uh, the Saudi Crown Prince and his staff dropped tens of thousands of dollars in Trump's hotel while uh, Trump was uh, in office. They were not only negotiating an arms deal, they were seeking the Iranian deal or the Iranian uh, agreements under the previous administration to be overturned. And we know that months after Trump and Kushner left the Oval Office, the MBS uh, committed $2 billion to Kushner against the advice of his own um, investment uh, uh, advisors. And we know that in Kazakhstan, we had Kazakh uh, president who came and stayed again in Trump's New York uh, and DC properties um, while there was these very nefarious activities going on. So I would encourage our colleagues to actually look at the receipts and then go look at the dates and what was actually happening in, in the media. It's very clear that whether or not Trump encouraged them to stay in his hotels or properties or these foreign governments stayed in them and then told Trump and his son-in-law they were seeking influence by staying at his property and thus were trying to bribe him, which is a violation of the Emoluments Clause of the United States Constitution. So let's move back to the amendment here just for a moment. I do want to just establish a little bit of a timeline. Um, and Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, I'd like to just ask some clarifying questions on the timeline. It's my understanding that in February of last year that you transmitted a letter to Biden, uh, Biden's attorneys uh, seeking documents and communications from the investigation. Is that correct? I'll, I'll go ahead and answer on your behalf because we have the we have the records for that um, if it's not immediately or at your hands. Our understanding from um, from the witness is that uh, that the chairman and his staff never responded to that request. In fact, they didn't hear back until or they didn't hear another thing until seven months later when in September, Mr. Comer, uh, you appeared on a TV news station on Newsmax and said, quote, Hunter Biden is more than welcome to come in front of the committee if he wants to clear his good name, if he wants to come and say, you know, uh, that these weren't his dealings, then he could come and clear his name. And so literally the next day on September 13th, Biden's attorney responded and wrote you back and said, do you never responded to our offer? I'll come in, I'll come do a public testimony. A couple months later, after the impeachment hearing that just completely fell apart, Chairman, you went on the Benny show and you extended another offer to Hunter Biden to come testify in front of the American people under oath. And yet again, when Biden's attorney transmitted a letter offering to do so, instead you issued a subpoena to do a closed door deposition. It's it's just very odd, right? Like, here we are, there's been a lot of yelling today. I think we're all getting real tired of all of this. But the reality is, is that Hunter Biden has even today showed up in front of the committee ready to testify under oath. 
So, you know, like, let's be real. And I think the reality is, is that of all of these tens of thousands of documents that have been provided to the majority in their investigation, none of them have actually shown any wrongdoing by the president. And so it's easier to create a smoke screen to keep this narrative in the media and to peddle in disinformation. Behind Time's expired doors. and there's so many inaccuracies with your statement, we don't have time to address them all. The chair recognizes Mr. Donalds for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, we should be voting down this amendment. It is not needed. Uh, what is clear is that the only document that matters is the fact that there was a subpoena issued by this committee signed by the clerk of the House of Representatives. That is the only thing that governs subpoenas before anybody coming to this committee. It does not matter if any member of this committee did an interview any place, whether it's the chairman or any other member. That is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is a signed subpoena by the chairman of this committee and the clerk of the house. The semantics about what Hunter Biden thought he could do or what Abby Lowell, his attorney, tried to get him to be able to posture or get out of it is meaningless. And the Democrats know this is meaningless. This is a subterfuge because their guy bucked a subpoena against the law, period, full stop. Members, vote down this amendment. I yield back. The, the question is on the amendment on the Goldman Amendment. So all those in favor of... We, we have another. What's that? We have another. Ms. Morton, did you want to... I gave five minutes to the, to the gentleman. From New York. From New York. Thank you. Uh, appreciate uh, my distinguished colleague from D.C. I, I want to just take this opportunity um, to address some of the chairman's uh, evidentiary allegations that um, you made earlier today. Um, <coughs> first, I would just note that we keep hearing this over and over and over again, that Donald Trump had a business, Donald Trump had real estate, Donald Trump, um, you know, sold widgets or whatever it is. Obviously, there are many different ways of investing or spending money or getting paid for services or for simply uh, putting capital into another company. So I don't know what these, in, uh, these investments were that uh, Hunter Biden and Devin Archer and, and these other folks were involved in. Devin Archer testified that it was private equity. Um, that's a legitimate form of business to invest capital in other companies. Don't you believe we should get that question under oath? You got it under oath from Devin Archer, sir. In any event, let's go back to the, um, let's go back to, I think, the fourth bank memorandum is what, uh, what you pointed me to earlier today, because you alleged, Mr. Chairman, that there is money that went directly from CEFC, a Chinese company, to Hunter Biden, then to Joe Biden in $40,000. Through the shells, yes. Oh, 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 through the shells, through the shells. Oh, you didn't say that. That, that you didn't say. So I, I went back. Well, you've and, had a hard and, time understanding what a shell company is, but anyway, go ahead. Uh, well, you would know, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I try. here we are uh, looking at this uh, Fourth am Amendment. We have, well, I'll show this chart first because it shows how clear it is. You've got Chinese company going to Biden-China joint venture, going to a Hunter Biden individual entity, going to James and Sarah Biden entity, going to James and Sarah Biden personal bank account, going to Joe Biden. So that, I guess, is what is directly money from China to Joe Biden. It just had to go from a Chinese company to a joint venture that Hunter Biden entered into with uh, another Chinese company. Would, would you yield the question? Uh, I just want to finish going through what you told me to go through, and then okay. I'm happy to, to yield. Then it went to uh, Hunter Biden's uh, personal company that he uh, generally used for a variety of his business ventures. Then it went to another entity for James and Sarah Biden. Then it went to James and Sarah Biden. Then Jim Biden, almost a month later, sent a $40,000 check to his brother, the president, which said was for a loan repayment, and the same bank records where you got this from showed that a loan went from Joe Biden to Jim Biden. That's not true. So this is the kind of duplicity that we're talking about. 
You want to say there's evidence connecting Joe Biden to Hunter Biden's business ventures, and you make a false and inflammatory allegation that money went from China to Hunter to Joe, when in reality, it's four pages, it's 21 bullet points of information to get from A to B to C to D to E to F. This is, there's no possible way that you could ever show that, that Jim that, that, Biden knows. Let, this is my time, Mr. Chairman. There is no possible way Jim Biden could, you could ever prove under any, on any circumstances that Jim Biden knew where that money came from. And you certainly cannot show with any evidence at all that Joe Biden would know that one month before six different transactions earlier, somehow this money came from a Chinese investment that Hunter Biden had. You are desperate. You are misrepresenting the facts. There is no evidence. There's no evidence of Joe Biden's involvement in Hunter Biden's business interests. There's no evidence of Joe Biden's uh, involvement in any Man Act or prostitution stuff. Hunter Biden should be investigated by the Department of Justice, and he has been for five years. He is a private citizen. This is what you call an impeachment investigation to the President of the United States based on complete fiction and smoke and mirrors. There well, isn't a piece of evidence that links anything that Hunter Biden did to Joe Biden, and this is a complete sham. Uh, your time's expired, and those accounts that they went through were depleted. It wasn't hard to trace the money. When there's not any money in the account, they don't, and it he doesn't have the through, bank records. No, no. No, but that, you, you have the bank records too. You all get every bit no of No one who receives the money has the, the account bank depleted bank account they records. Laundered through. All right, order, Chairman, order. Who's, Mr. Chairman. Ms. 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 Luna's Can I say something? Yes, you have no one minutes. is above the law. Even if you think that he's innocent, he cannot defy a congressional subpoena. That's what this is about. People here, I'm sure on that side too, have families members that have gone to jail for probably less offenses. So why does he allow, why is he given this special privilege? We have no authority if you have the president's son who's sitting there doing illegal things. I mean, I know it probably doesn't make you feel good to defend the guy. But like, for goodness sakes, he's denying he should be held accountable. At least bring him in and admit that. He should be held accountable by the Department of Justice, yeah, where wait, he wait, is wait, being no, held let, accountable. Let, let, wait, let him. Let him. He should be held accountable by well, the Department of Justice. But that is what we are voting to do, is to send that to investigation, because he did not. He denied and defied a congressional subpoena. Will the, will the generally yield? Wait, let me finish. If the DOJ doesn't uphold that, though, we have a serious problem in this country that this man is held above the law, and that is why we are arguing here today. We are trying to send it to the DOJ, but you're arguing against that. Would, yes, uh, I yield. Would, thank you. Um, would you agree that uh, members of Congress who outright defy subpoenas should also be held to the same standard? I believe that certain members are protected under the speech and debate clause. Some people here can probably school me on that. But aside from that, this is a serious investigation. There's been a lot of personal attack in this entire uh, correspondence that we've had in the last, I don't know, couple hours that we've been here. But what I will say is that Hunter Biden is not above the law. We want to send him to the DOJ, and we want to trust the DOJ to do their job. But right now, the American people have a serious distrust factor with the DOJ, and for good reason. So we would like to pass this, send him to the DOJ, and let's see if they'll do what they promised the American people they would do. I yield my time. Very good. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Ms. Tlaib. Yes, thank yes. you so much. I'd like to yield uh, my time to the ranking member. Ms. Tlaib, thank you very much. Um, I want to uh, pursue the very interesting conversation that we began about the Foreign Emoluments Clause. And again, I'm just delighted that after seven years, um, several Republicans now are actually taking an active interest in the Foreign Emoluments Clause um, as uh, a part of their investigation into the potential impeachment of Joe Biden, uh, which we've been working on for a year. Let's start with this. When Donald Trump took office, he refused to divest himself of any of his more than 500 businesses, and he refused to put any of his five, more than 500 businesses in a blind trust. He said he would continue to be the owner of those businesses, but he would transfer some of the day-to-day -day management to his sons. If anybody wants to contradict me on that, I will stand to be corrected. But that was what Donald Trump said when he was told by George W. Bush's ethics advisor that he was putting himself in extremely dangerous territory unless 
He stated that he was going to refuse to accept any money in the future from foreign governments. He ignored and defied the advice of all the ethics advisors for Republican administrations, for Democratic administrations. I want you to recognize the radically unprecedented nature of what he did at that point. And he set himself up for the trouble he got into. Now, the gentleman yield? Uh, I will, as soon as I make these points, I'll come right to you. Number two, Trump, the, uh, the, the, my, my good friend makes it sound like Donald Trump was totally innocent. He was, well, he was a businessman and he didn't know any of this was gonna happen with these foreign governments. Really, read the report in detail, my friend. For example, go to page 69. Here's a quote from Donald Trump as he was campaigning. I love the Saudis. Many are in this building. Saudi Arabia, I get along great with all of them. They buy apartments for me. They spend 40 million, 50 million. Am I supposed to dislike them? I like them very much. We can find quotes just like that about the Chinese government. This is your guy. Now, the governments knew exactly what they were buying at the exact same time. For example, take ICBC. And by, by the way, the vast majority of businesses were not paying before as tenants. That's not right. They were patronizing the hotels in Washington and New York. They were going to the golf clubs and so on. Some of, a handful of them were pre-existing tenants. That in itself is unconstitutional and illegal. You want to be president of the United States? Then you get out of that. You divest, which is what other presidents have done. Look at what Kennedy said. Look what Obama did. Look what Abraham Lincoln did. They, every president before Trump scrupulously followed the foreign emoluments clause. Go to page 10. There's a, a corrupt Chinese-owned bank called ICBC, one of Trump's uh, tenants, and the Department of Justice recommended sanctions against them for funneling money and services to North Korea, and Donald Trump reversed them because, as he was saying, he collected money from some of these people, like Saudi Arabia. He knew who he was collecting money from. Of course, Donald Trump knew that. He's a businessman. Is there anybody who would dare to challenge that <coughs> idea? Here's the, the former Republican chairman, Ed Royce, of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, who called on Trump to apply maximum financial and diplomatic pressure by targeting Chinese banks that do business with North Korea, like ICBC, and Donald Trump let them off Scott Free, just like he did with Saudi Arabia after the homicidal crown prince ordered for the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi, they covered up for him. He <coughs> said, we saved his blank, we saved his blank and he owes us now. And of course, as soon as the administration ended, his son-in-law created a business and brought back, what do you know, $2 billion from Saudi Arabia, even though the Sovereign Wealth National Investment Fund said it was a terrible idea, overruled by the crown prince whose blank was saved by Donald Trump. So our founders would not would be offended that we even have to get into the specifics of what was done because they said categorically, nobody can take a dollar from a foreign government. Do you understand that? No payment quote of any kind, whatever. So we don't have to have this ridiculous, humiliating debate about how far one of our presidents abased himself to line his own pockets. Would the gentleman yield? Sure, I would love to yield. So my, my, my thought process here is I understand that the president lost money during his tenure. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, he went bankrupt five times. It doesn't surprise me if that's true, but I doubt it because I think they made more money that year than they had in the several prior years before he became president. Well, he dropped out of the, the top 100, so yeah. I can tell you. Well, yeah, because they, they started finally checking the records. Uh, you know that your, your guy uh, cooks the books a little bit. But in any event, Donald Trump in Hooks that, the books the, with the rules that Congress right, and the right, made the rules right. for. He was just been punished ready to by vote the on state the amendment? of New York. Are we ready to vote on the amendment? All right. All those in favor of the Goldman Amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the no's have recorded it vote, please agreed to a recorded vote is ordered as previously announced. Further proceedings on the question will be postponed. All right. Now. Where's my record? I understand. Mr. Raskins. Mr. Raskins, you have an amendment at the desk. I do. The clerk will distribute the amendment to all members. Does everyone have the Raskin Amendment? Yeah. Does everyone have it? She's not going to read it. Okay. The, the clerk will designate the amendment. 
Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute as offered by Mr. Raskin of Maryland. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read. I reserve a point of order. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized for five minutes to explain his amendment. No, thank you kindly, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I mean, since we haven't read the amendment, I'm just going to work through the basic terms of it. Um, resolved that the initial deadline for Hunter Biden to comply with the subpoena issued on November 8th was December 13th, 2023. Resolved that current members of Congress and three members of this committee have refused to comply with subpoenas duly issued under the authority of the United States House of Representatives, including Mr. Biggs of Arizona, Mr. Jordan of Ohio, and Mr. Perry of Pennsylvania. Resolved that the aforementioned members of Congress have first-hand knowledge and information related to the January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol and on this body and on the Vice President of the United States that is of critical importance for the American people and the work of this committee, that the deadline for Hunter Biden to comply with the November 8th subpoena be changed to the date upon which the aforementioned members of Congress supply their knowledge and information to the committee on oversight and accountability. In other words, Hunter Biden has until uh, has the date has until the date upon which our own members comply with the subpoenas that were issued in the last Congress that have still not been sub, um, supplied, and that the aforementioned members of Congress shall be ineligible to vote on matters pertaining to contempt of Congress considered by this committee until the date upon which the aforementioned members of Congress supply this knowledge and information to the committee on oversight and accountability. In other words, you should not be standing in judgment on contempt of other people who allegedly have violated their subpoenas when you have violated a subpoena uh, and have not complied with the orders of the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, I would also like to uh, raise a problem that struck me as I was looking through the paperwork on this, Mr. Chairman, which is that the subpoena that was sent to Mr. Biden, uh, which came around uh, a week before, I guess, or uh, a couple months before, it was issued on November 8th, 2023, um, was issued before the House of Representatives had voted on impeachment. I remember there were numerous Republican members uh, who were very hesitant about voting for it because of the testimony of the uh, majority's own witnesses who said there was nothing closely approximating a quantum of evidence that would justify impeachment. And so there had been no vote on it, you'll there recall. No voter. And on November 8th, uh, the subpoena was issued. The subpoena date for appearance uh, was on December could, the... Oh, yeah. uh, Mr. Gosar has a point of order. Did, point. Yeah. yeah, we're not talking about an impeachment. We're talking about an impeachment inquiry. We need to be very cons considerate about that. Well, exactly right. And that goes right to the, the point of this question I have. Thank you, Mr. Gosar. Um, the subpoena was issued on November 8th for a subpoena date of appearance on December 13th. Um, and that was the same date when you'll recall we were called to the House and then there was a vote on impeachment. So the underlying subpoena here is at least arguably invalid for the purposes of holding him, holding him in contempt of not complying with the subpoena related to impeachment. And I wonder if we could clear that up. But in any event, I would press the amendment. Certainly those members who have outstanding subpoenas from the U.S. House of Representatives who blew off the subpoenas should turn over what they know about the violent attack on the U.S. Capitol, the worst domestic political violence designed to overthrow an election in American history at the Capitol. And they should turn that over. And at that point, then, then yes, I will we yield one second. And then Mr. Biden should also be forced to comply uh, at that point. In the meantime, those members really should not be voting on uh, contempt motions related to other witnesses. And somebody had a question. I did. We yield? Uh, yes. Are you sure that everybody up there actually received the subpoena? I mean, um, your, your board sorry. says they re certain people received a subpoena. And um, in my experience, some of those people up there did not receive a subpoena. And so notified counsel for your bogus J6 committee. Well, um, first of all, every court in the land has rejected the claim there was anything bogus about it. As you know, uh, the courts rejected the idea that it was somehow Was it heard before every court in the land? Uh, every court that heard it, can, do you have any authority on your side for that outrageous proposition? I know you'd like to believe it, but your fantasies are not the law of the United States. 
I have great fantasies. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain you do. Uh, and, yeah, you and me just tell you might want to discuss them together. Yeah, but okay. but you, you haven't answered the question. You don't know if those people actually even received the I, subpoena. Then, and yet again, you put it on the board, and you're, yeah, you're yeah, going forward and trying reclaiming to my time, people Reclaiming contempt. my time. I served for more than a year on the bipartisan January 6th Select Committee to investigate the attack. You might not like Liz Cheney anymore, who was head of your conference, but it was bipartisan, my friends. And so was Adam Kinzinger, uh, who served his country well. So, but in any event, uh, nobody ever claimed that they hadn't gotten the subpoena. Um, and Go back they, and check the record. Well, sir. if that's the argument, have them come forward and explain that. I would like them to testify okay. under oath All that right. they never received Gentlemen's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chair recognizes Mr. Palmer from Alabama. Chair recognizes Mr. Palmer. Mr. Chairman, I make a, a motion that we immediately dispense with the amendment for lack of germaneness. Okay. I am prepared to rule the amendment is not germane to the bill. Therefore, the amendment is not in order. Mr. Chairman, I would like to appeal the ruling of the chair. It's clearly germane. It goes right to the heart of what we're doing here today. Okay. The motion to appeal the ruling of the chair is not debatable. All those in favor of tabling the appeal. Oh, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Gosar. All right. The, the, okay. Mr. Gosar's motion is not debatable. All those in favor of tabling the appeal of the chair signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion uh, to appeal the ruling of the chair is tabled. The committee will now resume consideration of any further amendments before this body. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. It's Garcia okay, number who, three. Who said that? Mr. Garcia. Okay, it's Garcia. Thank uh, you. It's will the amendment clerk number three? please report? Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute as offered by Mr. Garcia of California. Okay, without objection, the amendment is considered as read. I reserve a point of order. Uh, Mr. Garcia is recognized for five minutes to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know obviously what we're seeing today uh, has been quite insane. We've has seen pornographic images. We've talked about white privilege. But what we haven't seen is any sort of evidence uh, linking uh, President Biden to any sort of wrongdoing. There's been absolutely zero evidence discussed today. And as we know, all the demands for a public hearing uh, with Hunter um, have gone unanswered. Uh, even today when we asked for that for that vote. But what we do have is plenty of evidence that we've uncovered in this in this committee and that have been against the Constitution with our investigation of foreign government payments to President Trump through his businesses. And what do we have as Democrats? We have receipts, proof, a timeline, screenshots. We have everything we need to prove conclusively that foreign governments were funneling money through Trump properties and into Donald Trump's pockets, all in violation of the Constitution. Now, we don't have access to all of Trump's pro properties, and he has hundreds, by the way, of properties and business interests. And we don't have access because our chairman actually chose to end that investigation. But my amendment will fix that by demanding a full accounting of Trump's businesses. Now, we know that we can already prove about almost $8 million of foreign payments, illegal payments, against the Constitution back to the Trump Organization. And that is just a tip of the iceberg, because we don't have access to the other hundreds of businesses and properties. That $8 million of receipts and payments that we have is only from a total of four properties of the hundreds of businesses of Donald Trump and his family. No family in history has ever benefited more than the Trumps and the Kushners. And I actually want to talk about Jared over here especially, his son-in-law. His son-in-law was brought in to run Middle East policy at the start of the Trump White House. By the way, having zero experience in doing that work and against the, the objections of the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. Trump and Kushner, of course, made their first state visit to Saudi Arabia, overruling the State Department. This is at the same time, by the way, that Jared was actually putting together a $110 billion arms deal for the Saudis. But what was happening during that time? The Saudis were paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in room stays and foreign gifts that were illegal under the Constitution back into the Trump Organization. Over and over, through hotels and properties, these shady investments by the president, his sons, and his son-in-law, who was an employee of the White House, all worked to enrich 
the Trump family and Donald Trump himself. And the insane part is that just months after leaving the White House, Jared Kushner received a $2 billion with a B investment fund from the Saudis to manage and being paid directly as well out of that fund that the Saudi government organized. I want to just mention also that our chairman also said, and I quote, that this crossed the line of ethics, end quote. So why have we not investigated the Trump crime family and the current and ongoing abuse by Jared Kushner as a government official? And I remind folks, Hunter actually never worked for the government. He was a private citizen. That's why I want to offer my amendment, which lays out the details of not just the $8 million in illegal, unconstitutional foreign payments, but also demands Donald Trump to pay back the taxpayers. It demands a full accounting of all of his properties, and it subpoenas the Kushner businesses so we can understand the complete grift, not just from Saudi Arabia, Arabia but the 20 other foreign governments which we have records for and the governments that we don't have records for, like places like Russia, which we know there was a, uh, there was a series of investments ma made there as well. And so with that, I urge support for this amendment. Gentleman yields. Chair recognizes Mr. Palmer from Alabama. Mr. Chairman, I move to dispense with the amendment immediately. It is not germane. I'm prepared to rule. The, the amendment is not germane to the bill. Therefore, the amendment is not in order. Right, Mr. Chairman, I would like to appeal the ruling of the chair. It's clearly germane, germane and relevant. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate it. Mr. Gosar. Yes, I move to table the motion. Okay. The motion uh, to table Mr. Raskin's appeal is not debatable. All those in favor of tabling the appeal of the chair signify by saying aye, aye. All those opposed say no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion to appeal the ruling of the chair is tabled. The committee will now resume consideration. Is there any other amendments? Mr. Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. Okay, who's Mr. It? Frost. Mr. Frost, uh, will the clerk please report? Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute as offered by Mr. Frost of Florida. Okay, the, the clerk will distribute the amendment to all members. What's that? Okay, we, we're... Uh, we're waiting on copies of the amendment.
Okay, the clerk, have you designated the amendment you have? Uh, without yes, objection, the amendment is considered as read. I reserve a point of order. Uh, Mr. Frost is recognized for five minutes to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm offering an amendment to this misguided resolution that would essentially work to take out the lies and the smoke and mirrors and insert the truth of the matter before us. And the fact of the matter is that Chairman Comer has a history of selective treatment of the facts presented to him um, that would really make any witness concerned about any kind of closed door procedure or deposition. My amendment outlines how last month Chairman Comer uh, tried to push this fake impeachment by selectively, selectively talking about a truck that President Biden initially made payments on while he was still a private citizen that his son, Hunter Biden, later, later paid him back for. The month before, Chairman Comer selectively released just a one page of a four page email chain to falsely claim that regulators were concerned that Hunter Biden was money laundering when that wasn't true. What the chairman selectively forgot to share is that the other three pages of the email directly contradicted his claims. Regulators explicitly stated that the transactions were reasonably and consistent with the business profile, and that's a quote and that the entity was transparent. And it doesn't stop there. My amendment outlines how the chairman has misrepresented the mountain of bank records that show no wrongdoing. The fact that Chairman Comer has only released two of the 17, two of the 17 witness transcripts so far. We want him to release the transcripts. And we also know that the chairman has interviewed some of Hunter Biden's associates. And it seems that to the rest of America that and no dirt could be found. And because of that, they wanted to bury the truth. But the truth is out because the truth is that this has been a complete waste of time. Republican, cl Republican claims all throughout this case barely hold up to the slightest bit of scrutiny. And it's not just me saying that. We've heard it on Fox News. We've heard it from the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, CNN, and others who have been investigating uh, the chairman's false claims of evidence against President Biden. And once again, it's been said time and time again, Hunter Biden, took us up on the offer of sitting in that chair in this committee and publicly uh, uh, answering questions so that way the public can see it and so that way he doesn't have his words misrepresented in a closed door deposition. And what this works to do is give the entire story. If you're gonna vote to hold him, him in contempt, at least, at least vote yes on this amendment so we can include the full story in this piece of legislation. It is the fear of the truth that has stopped the chairman from accepting Hunter Biden's offer to testify publicly, and my amendment um, essentially lays it all out on the table. I urge adoption of my amendment, and then let's move on and do the real work of the American people, especially in these difficult times. I yield back. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Chairman, I have a parliamentary inquiry. Chair, Chair recognize Mr. Donald. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, my inquiry is this, that considering, uh, though it seems to be we're going to be going into these amendments where the context of the matter at hand has been debated since 10 a.m. this morning. I would move, Mr. Chairman, that further debate on amendments will be considered under 20 minutes of structured debate in total, 10 minutes for each side of majority and minority on the committee to fully debate the merits of each amendment going forward, Mr. Chairman. That's my question for the parliamentary. Mr. Mr. Askew. Yeah, but I would move to accept that um, and move by Unanimous consent that we accept okay. that proposal. So without objection, so ordered. Ten minute debate on each side. Does any member wish to debate? Mr. Chairman. Further. Katie Porter, Ms. Porter was next. Is it this? Okay, Ms. Porter. I'm glad that um, my colleague from the other side has moved to limit debate because this hearing, to put it bluntly, has sucked. There is one thing that Republicans and Democrats seem to have in common today, which is that we're willing to be players in a game. Both sides, at times, using this hearing to take shots at our favorite political nemeses. And I see some members practically patting themselves on the back when they get a good insult or counterpoint in. But this isn't a game. Oversight isn't a game. Under this Republican majority, we have wasted month after month censuring, expelling, holding people in contempt, and almost impeaching, and for what? 
Okay. Republicans have passed nothing of substance in the House. What our Oversight Committee should be doing, instead of spending now dozens of hours arguing about Hunter Biden, is real oversight of issues that affect all Americans, like corporate price gouging, unconstitutional government surveillance, and waste at the Pentagon. The fact that members think that real Americans outside of this partisan environment on Capitol Hill care about this is everything that is wrong with Washington. So that Americans who love this country and just want a better future don't have to listen to hours of frustrating attacks and procedural debates in a partisan game, let me sum it up. One, there is zero evidence of President Biden doing anything wrong, including in connection with his son. No evidence of an impeachable offense. Not a little, not something, none. Two, Hunter Biden has offered to testify in public in front of this committee. If Republicans only want his secret private testimony, that is, as the kids say this these days, sus. If my Republican colleagues are truly in this to get answers, and I hope they are, stop wasting all our time on holding Hunter Biden in contempt on a deposition and ask him your questions. He'll be here under oath and the American people can watch. What's more transparent than that? What's better accountability than letting the American people hear Hunter Biden's answers? That's real accountability, not political gamesmanship behind closed doors. This is a game where nobody wins and everybody loses. It is Washington at its worst. And I'll tell it like it is without pointing the finger at either party. This sucks. I yield back. Does any further member wish to debate on the frost Mr. Chairman, amendment? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Palmer. I, I, I appreciate the gentlelady's remarks, but I do want to point out that one of the reasons it's necessary for Hunter Biden to appear to give a deposition is that he is a material witness in an ongoing investigation of potential corruption at, 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 at a very high level. I think, to your point, that this is devolved into partisan politics. When we have an obligation as members of this committee, a, a very solemn responsibility to pursue evidence and investigate charges legitimately and not let it become what it has become today. And I don't think we're getting there. I do think that Hunter Biden has a responsibility to respond to the subpoena through his legal counsel, if, if he so chooses, uh, in a responsible way. What he did in showing up outside the steps of the Senate is contemptible. He shouldn't have done that. But we need to investigate this. We need to follow the evidence. And he needs to appear as a material witness to an ongoing investigation. If he comes in to testify before this committee, there are other issues related to his activities that I think would be germane. But I really believe at this point we need to move forward to this. And, and, and frankly, I, I think Hunter Biden should have responded to the subpoena and, and either himself or through his legal counsel. Will that, Mr. Chairman, or yield back? Let me yield back. Mr. Boskowitz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I appreciate the gentleman's solemn points and pleas, but, but the reason why folks on this side of the aisle have a hard time digesting that is because your curiosity on what violates the law only applies when it's politically convenient. To talk about Hunter Biden when it's pennies, when, when it's pennies compared to $2 billion from a foreign government. And I'm not saying that Jared Kushner violated the law. But what I am saying is that was probably negotiated before he left, a $2 billion deal. You announce it months after you leave, probably negotiated before. He never run a hedge fund before. We talk about Hunter Biden having no experience. He never had run a hedge fund before. He was put in charge of Middle East. The $2 billion is from the Middle East. He had no experience in the Middle East. But there's no curiosity because it's Jared, and because he's, he's Trump's son-in-law. And so 
ask, coming to us and pleading with us about Hunter would, would have, wouldn't sound so hypocritical if there was one of you, just one of you, that would look into the camera and speak into the microphone and say, you know what, that smells pretty bad. We should look into that as well. And I think, quite frankly, the American people would believe you more about your inquiry and about Hunter if they saw your curiosity into the Biden family with the same curiosity into the Trump family. And so that's why we are where we are. It's why the American people have no faith in, into, in this institution. And, and it's also why, quite frankly, you know, many members of your own party have gone in front of the camera and admitted the 118th Congress has done nothing. And so we're, we're here. We, we would like to do oversight and apply the law and the rules universally. But when we talk about Trump or Jared Kushner, you all look down just to make sure Donald Trump doesn't see you on camera. You, you can't even like look up and be interested that a foreign government months after someone who actually worked in the White House, Hunter Biden never worked in the White House, months after someone worked in the White House and was in charge of that very region, got $2 billion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would the gentleman yield? Sure, yes, I would, I would. With great respect, your allegations have absolutely nothing to do with what this committee's investigating. And you're not, again, you're not curious about it, though? Well, it has absolutely nothing to do with anything that we're investigating. And, but we, and, don't and we, just, but don't it, we get to decide? That there are questions. Okay, sorry, sorry. Go well, I, I, and I don't want to I, use up the time, but I made my point. I yield back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to respond to my friend from Florida, gentle lady from California. I think this unfortunately does devolve into a partisan exercise. And I just listened with interest at what you say kind of, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use galls folks on the other side of the aisle. It bothers you. And I, I respect that. So I want to let you know what galls or what troubles us on this side of the aisle based on all the claims that you have made. Because many of us, I was one of them, sat in a skiff week after week, day after day. For an impeachment, one of the members of this committee now, as a staff member then, a staff attorney then, knew there were lies being told to, to compel the impeachment, to back up the impeachment, to reinforce the impeachment. Lies. Abject, straight up lies. Not to mention the fact that for years, the other side of the aisle pursued the then duly elected president of the United States based on pure hyperbole about some Russian hoax that has now turned into, you know, it's, it's the same old story from the 1930s in, in Germany and the 1940s. If you tell a lie enough times, it becomes the truth. We sat and watched you dismantle the country and the presidency and any agenda that the American people have voted for based on that. And to date, to this minute, to this moment, I don't think one of you have ever to use your phraseology, the kind gentleman from Florida, stood in front of a camera and said, you know, pretty, that was pretty bad, holy smokes, I can't believe we did that. And now, with the benefit of hindsight, we look back, and I look back and I say, how could we have ever done that? How did we ever mislead the American people? How could we have lied? How can we make up for that? How can we recover the lost time? How can we recover the lost reputations? No interest whatsoever, none whatsoever. And again, this isn't about looking back at the past. This markup, this is a markup, this is not a hearing. This markup is strictly and specifically about the actions chosen by Hunter Biden. And I said again, and I'll say it, I said before and I'll say it again, I don't think this committee has any interest in prosecuting or pursuing Hunter Biden. He did this to himself. He made this choice. We all make decisions, and there are consequences to the decisions. He did that. Our duty is to say, is this a breach in the law? Is it a breach, yes or no? Clearly, he can come to Congress. He sat in this very room today. 
He was on the grounds the day that he was supposed to appear. So clearly he can come. He's chosen not to. If we're going to let everybody, look, Secretary Clinton got away with it, right? She was allowed to be deposed, not under oath, in her deposition on a Saturday, no, a holiday weekend. She got, to, she got to do that. That galls the rest of America who says, when the FBI or the local magistrate or some law enforcement agency comes knocking on my door and says, you're going to appear, you've been served. Well, see here, I, I think I'll set the, the terms of how and where I'll appear. I'll just do that. Me, citizen X. You know who gets to do that? Apparently Hunter Biden, who thinks he's above the law, who thinks he's special, who he and with the rest of his family, and with all due respect, this administration shows contempt for the law, contempt for the American people, contempt for the Constitution, and contempt for the citizens of this country. Contempt. And that's what this markup is about. And if you want to know what galls us is, you're not interested, you're not the least curious about all of that. With, with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield the balance. Mr. Chairman, may I respond? Since um, my, my friend from Pennsylvania directly um, addressed me, and, and I'm happy to have this conversation to compare the 2019 impeachment investigation. Why are you leaving, Mr. Perry? I'm happy to have the conversation. Because what you saw in that investigation was 17 fact witnesses who came in and testified under oath, and then 12 of them appeared in a public hearing. There wasn't a single thing that any Democratic member of Congress said that was not supported by neutral Trump administration fact witnesses and what their testimony and their documents said. Contrast that with what we have here. We haven't had a single public hearing with a single fact witness. Not one. The only public hearing we had was a complete debacle where the Republicans' own witnesses said that there is nothing approximating an impeachable offense here. So we're done. We're not having anything out in the, in the public. And you haven't even released the transcripts of all of the depositions. When we had our first impeachment hearing with the constitutional law professors, and I would note, I at least admire your fellow colleagues on the Homeland Security Committee, where, which I also sit, they didn't even bother to bring in any constitutional law or impeachment experts in their first impeachment hearing today. At least they learned from the debacle that was yours. But at that hearing, we asked, we moved to have the, your own fact witnesses come here and testify in public as part of the impeachment inquiry. And you voted it down. You voted it down. So if you want to compare 2019, that's fine. Let's do it. Because every single fact that was in a 300-page report was not spoken by counsel, me, by Adam Schiff, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, by any member of the Democratic Committee, of the Democratic Party. It was testimony from witnesses who had knowledge, who actually had expertise and experience and factual information about the topic at hand. We don't have that here. And when we have a witness who is willing to come and sit here and give you the evidence that you claim you want to have, you say no. You say no. You understand the accommodation process and how that works in Congress. That means that Congress issues a subpoena and the receiving party works with Congress to accommodate the interest of both parties so that Congress can get what it needs and the interest of the witness can also be served. Hunter Biden's attorney has done that. He has agreed to every single thing in your subpoena. Every single thing under oath, any questions you want, any topic you want, any date you want. He will not raise privileges available to him under the Fifth Amendment. He will answer your questions. The one accommodation he wants 
is to do it in public in front of the American people, and you are too afraid to let him do that. And I'll yield the remainder of the time to Mr. Raskin. Mm -hmm. Now, Chair's going to recognize you'll have Mr. Raskin will have a minute and three seconds. The Chair's going to recognize Mr. Gosar. I just have to throw in you must have been absent when the IRS whistleblowers testified uh, with respect to the number of crimes and evidence that the IRS had on the person who we're voting to hold in contempt today. You remember that hearing? Being Chair recognized Mr. Gosar. The Department of Justice because well, Chair recognized Mr. Gosar. I, I will tell you, the, the, the gentleman from New York has got some, some facts wrong. You know, uh, when we were talking to these witnesses, these constitutional, Jonathan Turley, they said there wasn't, they, they rose to the occasion of, uh, of impeachment. But they said there was a suspicion, and that's what the in, in, impeachment inquiry was all about, to go get that information, if there is. They all said that, they, that there was a suspicion, a suspicion based on these shell corporations. So they did say that. They didn't say what you just said. You, you mischaracterized that. So, you know, from, from that standpoint, we have to be very, very careful with how we're picking this, cherry picking this information. Maybe we do it, but you do it too. And you did it right there because they did not have Will the gentleman yield for a question. I'll give you a quick, I'll give a quick you. question. I, what I said was, uh, and I, I just want to make sure we're on the same. I said that the witness testified that there was insufficient evidence to impeach Joe Biden. It was an you impeachment inquiry. No, 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 no. It was an He said there was more than enough well, evidence yeah. to proceed with the impeachment inquiry. That's what we're doing. Let's what, be but clear did he about what we're doing. But did also say that here. there was insufficient Wait, evidence. Not Mr. Gosar's time. <laughs> no. Yeah. He said both. He said both. You know, and, and, and when, you make it, when we're comparing apples to apples on the two impeachments of Mr. Trump, you didn't even go through an impeachment inquiry. You didn't even vote on the floor on one of those. So if you're talking about apples and apples, we're not even close to that. You know, the one thing I thought was, was that, you know, the lady uh, justice is blindfolded. She's got the scales. You put the information in there and she's going to give you a result. She's blindfolded. She doesn't see who that is. You know, Trey Gowdy made that comment. We're missing the point here, is that the information that we got is from factual based. There's information there that is suspicious. Why would you stack all these shell companies up? You got the IRS folks that said, listen, we whistleblowers. They've been exonerated. They, I, I gotta tell you, they're not liars. They're not liars. They need to do one thing, they're good at, at auditing. So. I think what we do is we get back to the order of business. That is, is Hunter Biden violated the context of the subpoena. You know, he's not above the rule of law, so we ought to be just continuing that vote. I, I, I yield. Right. Now, Mr. Raskins has a minute and three seconds. Yep. First, uh, to my friend, Mr. Gosar, um, we did not launch an impeachment inquiry for the second impeachment because Donald Trump tried to overthrow the Constitution on January 6th, two weeks before he left office, and we were the targets of that impeachable offense. So we all saw it. We were the witnesses, and we were the ones to vote on it, and we didn't quite have time uh, for uh, all of those niceties, but all of us knew exactly what happened. Secondly, I am sorry that Mr. Perry... Um, you know, left the room at Josh Hawley's speed when Mr. Goldman uh, began to, s to speak there uh, because he made two really important points. One was he said that if you get a subpoena, you comply with the subpoena, you answer it. Yes, I would like to tell him, Mr. Perry, you comply with your subpoena, but no, he decided to irrigate the law to himself and to claim that the January 6th committee was invalid, it was illegal, it was unconstitutional, all claims that were rejected by federal courts. They do not have a single case authority for that at all. And yet he's going to now lecture other people about complying with subpoena. I mean, he should, uh, I think, uh, delegate some of his time to some other members to speak on that. It's a little uncomfortable over there. And finally, um, the, 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 I'm sorry? the gentleman. Yes, and you're, I will you're, yield. You're, yes, go ahead. I will allude to good process builds good policy, builds good policy. Would you agree? Yes, I totally you don't agree. Skip in the severity of it, impeachment. You never skip that process. The, the, but you did. Donald Trump was already arguing that he couldn't be tried because it was too late at that point. Okay. He was already arguing. All right. that. You, you're all. Ten minutes has expired, uh, Mr. Fallon. I think we have a minute and a half. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, what this has devolved into is deny, 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 counter accuse. It's a, it, it, it's an old adage, and it's. 
It's unfortunate um, because, again, and we've been talking about this now five, six, ten times, the difference between a private a deposition is hundreds of hours can be uh, expended and you can really drill down and you can have accountability. You can get an in-depth interview. And then at that point, after we've all read that, we can come here and each of us can get our five minutes. This is a very big difference and it's a distinction that needs to be, again, reiterated and refuting some of the democratic arguments. And then I read this actual amendment and I see this footnote number 17, this amendment where the author says, Chairman Comer has also dishonestly and repeatedly suggested that the then Vice President Biden had the prosecutor of Ukraine fired as a part of a bribery scheme. What is, where's the proof? And then you read the footnotes and these are, there are opinion pieces. The fact is that according to the FBI, the informant, the human source, was very reliable. They paid him over $100,000 and they've been working with him for almost 10 years. Did Victor Shoke and the prosecutor get fired? Yes. Who was advocating for that? Joe Biden was advocating for that. Mikolo Zolchevsky, the corrupt oligarch who was the CEO of Burisma, paid his son millions of dollars. And, Zol and Victor Shokin, the prosecutor, had seized land, a few homes, and a Rolls Royce from Zolchevsky. So he was apparently doing his job. And even when he was fired, the president of Ukraine, on the call to Joe Biden, said, we, didn't, you, we thought he was doing a good job, but you wanted him fired, so he's gone. Uh, Biden bragged about that. These are all facts. So I'm going to vote against the amendment because the amendment is factually incorrect. And I yield back. Uh, time has expired for both sides. The question is on the Frost Amendment. All those in favor of the Frost Amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Recorded vote, please. A recorded vote is ordered as previously announced. Further proceedings on the question will be postponed. Mr. Chairman. Does any member wish to be recognized? Ms. Stansbury? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will distribute the amendment to all members. Reading of this, this is non germane because this is trying to talk about that it's saying that like the evidence um, shows no wrongdoing by President Biden, but this contempt report mm -hmm. is all about Hunter Biden that showing up for a subpoena mm -hmm. and asking questions. I, 
so we can have that prepared. So the procedural question is this. Several, um, a I don't know how many, but some of our members just got called up to the speaker's office for a meeting. That was? This is what happened last time. The clerk will designate the Stansbury Amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute as offered by Ms. Stansbury of New Mexico. Uh, without objection, the amendment is considered as read. I reserve a point of order. Uh, the gentlelady from New Mexico is recognized for five minutes to explain her amendment. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate the opportunity to offer what I hope is a pretty straightforward amendment. We've heard a lot today. There's been a lot of high emotion and intensity and yelling, but this is really about getting the facts correct in the resolution itself. So, Mr. Chairman, this amendment actually corrects the ANS, uh, which is uh, replaced the original resolution text to correct the record in this resolution in the section uh, that begins on page five of your resolution and goes to page seven on the background on the investigation. And with all due respect to my colleagues who were yelling a few moments ago about this only having to do with Hunter Biden, it's very clear this is a political act and you don't really need to dig much further than to actually read the resolution itself because what the resolution does is make conclusions uh, that are not based in evidence which are not factual and mr chairman i'm gonna be honest i'm a former senate staffer i'm embarrassed I mean, I, we can't send this to the floor. It's not factual. It's filled with all kinds of misinformation. So um, what my amendment would do is clarify the actual evidentiary background that was conducted as part of this investigation, which I'd like to know, it didn't just begin, though there was a, a vote on the floor a few weeks ago. Th this actually began last year, at the beginning of last year, and I'll get back to that here in a moment. But over the course of this investigation, uh, 82,000 pages of records have been reviewed from the National Archives. There's been 30,000 pages of bank records reviewed, 2,000 pages of Treasury report uh, records, dozens of hours of testimony from special counsel, U.S. attorneys, DOJ officials, FBI, IRS agents, financial advisors, business partners, ways and means provided evidence. We had expert witnesses come and testify under oath live in front of the committee, including during the impeachment hearing in September, and other witnesses who've been called in for depositions and recorded uh, interviews. And so there has been a massive body of evidence actually brought before this committee. And in fact, in the September, September impeachment hearing, as has been said many times here today, uh, the witnesses that were called here, including the GOP's own expert witnesses, um, concluded that there was not sufficient evidence to proceed with an impeachment. Now, I understand that there's a rhetorical argument here being made about um, an impeachment investigation. 
But Mr. Chairman, with all due respect, that's, that's not actually what your resolution says. Your resolution makes declarative statements about uh, the president. It makes uh, statements about his involvement in his son's activities, which are just factually untrue. We, we don't have any evidence. There's no material evidence that's been provided before this committee. So what my amendment does is it corrects the record about what evidence has come before the committee so that if you are going to send this to the floor next week for a vote, which we understand that you are, it's actually factual. I mean, that's what we're here to do, right? Um, the other kind of comments I'd like to add here is, you know, Mr. Chairman, you said yourself just a few moments ago, we can't just make stuff up. Um, this, we're the oversight committee, so we want to make sure that the evidence that uh, we're telling the American people about is clear and factual, and that what we're telling the American people about what is happening not only publicly in this domain, but also within the committee's investigation is factual. And, you know, I had the opportunity yesterday to sit in one of the taped interviews with one of the witnesses who's been called before this committee. I have to say, Mr. Chairman, I was really shocked. You know, we sat there, the witness answered the questions of the majority, and man, those members who were sitting in that room, they ran downstairs as soon as they heard the first few minutes of testimony, and then they went directly to the press gaggle and shared a complete misrepresentation of what happened in that room. And that's why Mr. Biden is trying to appear under oath publicly in front of the American people because time and again, and I saw it with my very own eyes yesterday, we have members who are participating in this inquiry who are misrepresenting the facts. So let's get the facts correct inside of this resolution. Now finally, I want to just point out that this impeachment inquiry actually precedes even like some of the conspiracy theories that are even being put forward here today. We heard, you know, back in the summer that two members of this committee had competing impeachment resolutions on the floor, one of which had nothing to do with the, with the evidence that the committee is trying to bring in on this matter. So, and they got in a, in a vocal fight on the floor of the House because they were, you know, so ravenous to prove to Donald Trump that they were his uh, supporters and going to help impeach uh, Joe Biden. So th let's not play games. This is, this is a political activity, but if you are going to engage in a political activity, let's make sure it's factual. With that, I yield back. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, I move that this uh, motion be immediately dispensed with uh, and, and tabled. It is not germane to the markup. Parliamentary inquiry. Can, can you explain what is not germane about it? <laughs> it, if I, well, I haven't ruled, but I'm going to rule it's not germane. Uh, it, it, viol awesome. it violates the fundamental purpose of the report. In other words, it addresses the fundamental purpose of the no. report? No. It violates the fundamental purpose of the report. That's the ruling of the chair. Okay, I'd like to appeal the ruling. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Chairman, could Mr. you Gosses. please, point of order, please. Yes. Uh, could you please clarify what you mean by the report? Because my understanding is the ANS is a resolution to hold Mr. Biden in contempt, but this amendment is to correct the resolution so that there is a factual accounting of the... There is a factual accounting. We've been very transparent. This has been a very transparent, substantive investigation. Mr. Chairman, with all, all right. due respect, I encourage Go, the sorry. American people to read... No, the I think the American people are keeping up with this. I, the, well, we'll see. In this uh, resolution, not Go, report, sorry. I also encourage the chairman to use the correct terminology when engaging in parliamentary procedure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I see you're right. Yes, Mr. Gosar. Move to table the motion. Okay. Uh, the motion by Mr. Gosar is uh, to table is not debatable. All those in favor of tabling the appeal of the chair may signify by saying aye, aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. In the motion to appeal, the ruling of the chair is tabled. The committee will now resume consideration of any other amendments are there any other amendments 
Mr. Crockett. Mr. Mr. Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk distribute the amendment. Yes. Hmm? No. I got time to use it. Okay.
Will the clerk designate the Crockett Amendment? Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute as offered by Ms. Crockett of Texas. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read. I reserve a point of order. Uh, Ms. Crockett is recognized for five minutes to explain her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm in introducing this amendment to emphasize the importance of telling the truth. Chairman Comer has given us alternative facts about the testimony of Mr. Devin Archer provided to this committee, the Democrats and Republicans, but behind closed doors. Again, it's common sense not to trust my colleagues on the other side of the aisle when it comes to stating the facts, because they are the same ones that gave us alternative facts about the election, they gave us alternative facts about January 6, and thus far they have given us alternative facts at least to the American people about their motivation for this impeachment inquiry. So I do have a few receipts that I'd like to go through. On December 6, 2023, Chairman Comer tweeted out that President Biden emailed with his son's business associates. But let me be clear, when consulting the transcript, it was determined that those were alternative facts. The actual facts found in Mr. Archer's transcribed interview show that President Biden was not involved in his son's business activities and that during his more than a decade long business relationship with Hunter Biden, Archer never witnessed President Biden have any involvement in his son's business dealings or take any official actions to benefit Hunter Biden or his businesses. And Archer never witnessed Hunter Biden discuss the substance of his business with his father or ask his father to take any official actions. Again, in August of 2023, Chair Comer stated in an interview to Newsmax that Mr. Archer, quote, admitted that the Burisma executives were squeezing Hunter Biden to try to do everything he could to get the prosecutors showed it, Shokin fired because they were going after their corrupt energy company. And lo and behold, a few days later, Joe Biden actually did that. After consulting the transcript, yet again, it was determined another alternative fact. The actual facts are that Mr. Archer specifically spoke about Ukraine and Hunter Biden's role with Burisma, the Ukrainian energy company on whose board they both served, and repeatedly stated Hunter Biden never discussed Burisma with his father and never asked his father to take an official action to benefit him or Burisma. Mr. Archer further stated that he had no reason to believe Vice President Biden's call for Shokin's removal was driven by anything other than the U.S. government's anti-corruption policy in Ukraine. Chairman Comer again tweeted, he loves his Twitter, on December 6th that President Biden was on speakerphone with the Biden family business associates over 20 times. We consulted the transcript and it was determined again, another alternative fact. Mr. Archer's transcribed interview actually states that while Hunter Biden spoke frequently with his father, sometimes when Hunter Biden was with other people, Mr. Archer stated he never witnessed any discussion of substantive business during these calls. Again, Chair Comer's association with reality about information brought forth by witnesses he demanded come in. Well, Chair Comer, we spun it again about Mr. Archer's statements when it came down to President Biden. When we consult the transcript over and over and over, it's been determined that the facts that have been laid out by the members of this committee on the Republican side have been alternative facts. When Mr. Archer was directly asked during the transcribed interview if President Biden was the brand Mr. Archer clarified that DC was the brand and that he and Hunter Biden helped to assemble a team of attorneys, lobbyists, and public officials, public affairs professional, professionals to handle Burisma's government relations and President Biden was not part of the DC team. It is no wonder that Hunter Biden wanted to come before everyone in public because Mr. Chairman, it is vital that we continually have to set the record straight and make sure that alternative facts are not what's being handed out to the American people, but instead the facts, the real facts, reality. Well, the gentleman- I would also yield. like to, yes. Okay, okay. Just, just for a quick question, Ms. Crockett, and I thank you for that illuminating intervention because I'm starting to wonder if the Russian hoax should apply to the lie about Burisma, which uh, sits at the very heart of this investigation. That's the real hoax, isn't it? In fact, uh, 
In fact, the, uh, Lev Parnas, who helped make it up, has been out there begging Chairman Comer and the Republicans to end this wild goose chase and to have him come testify about how they tried to concoct the lie in the first place. And yet, that's a witness that they don't want to hear from. I thank you. I they, yield back to you, Ms. Carter. They don't want to hear that. And, and if we care about making sure that the American people know that we have transparency and truth on this committee, then I would implore this committee to release the transcripts publicly instead of tweeting out alternative facts about what has been testified to. Mr. Chairman. Uh, as previously approved, each side has, Mr. as Chairman. previously approved, each side has 10 minutes debate. Uh, will the chair now recognize Mr. Palmer? Mr. Chairman, I move, make a motion that uh, we table this amendment. It is dilatory and not germane to the markup. But Mr. Chairman, didn't we already agree, I think, to have 10 minutes on each side? I'm not sure Mr. Palmer was aware of that agreement. Yeah, okay. We, we've. Uh, already agreed to have debate, 10 minutes debate. I'm sorry I didn't make I that clear. Motion. So, uh, does anyone wish to speak? Mr. 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 Goldman. Thank you. Um, I think this amendment is very important because it goes to the heart of the dispute that the chairman and the witness seem to be having, which is where would his testimony take place? Uh, the chairman is insisting that it be done in a closed-door deposition, um, whereas the witness uh, is insisting to take up the chairman's original offer to do this uh, in a public hearing. And one of the reasons that the witness continues to push for a public hearing is the Devin Archer closed-door transcribed interview. That is one of only two transcripts of, I believe, at least 18 transcribed interviews or depositions that this Republican majority has released. But it gives us really, really good insight into exactly what the chairman and the majority are, would plan to do with Hunter Biden's closed door testimony. Let's take, for example, just, I think, earlier this weekend, uh, Chairman Jordan of the Judiciary Committee, also a member of this committee, said on television that the most powerful evidence of President Biden's wrongdoing is the testimony of Devin Archer. So I wondered, I wonder, what, what is that testimony that is so powerful? Was it the testimony of Devin Archer when he said that President Biden was never involved in any of Hunter's business ventures? Or was it the testimony that President Biden never received any money from Hunter's business interest? And remember, Devin Archer testified he was Hunter Biden's primary business partner. He was on the board of Burisma with Hunter Biden. So he had firsthand knowledge of all of Hunter Biden's business deals. Now, maybe if it wasn't those, it was the fact that President Biden, according to Devin Archer, never received any bribes from the Ukrainian government. In fact, maybe it was even that he said that President Biden never discussed business with Hunter Biden or Hunter's business associates. It must be that he was focusing on the times when President Biden met or spoke to Hunter Biden's business associates. That clearly has to be what the chairman was talking about. So it must be that when you look at the transcript, what he was referring to is when Devin Archer repeatedly said that they never discussed business, that they only talked about, quote, niceties, including, and this is according to Devin Archer's testimony, how the weather was, and that none of the discussions ever related to business. So the best evidence that this, these Republicans want to put forward is testimony that completely absolves President Biden from any involvement, association, benefit from, or other interactions with Hunter Biden's business interests. Now, Chairman Comer 
you were asked a few weeks ago on CNN what you thought the best uh, evidence was of wrongdoing by President Biden, and you said that the allegations of the bribe from the Burisma founder, should we call it, I guess, the Burisma hoax now? Because unlike with Russia's interference in the 2016 election, which Special Counsel Mueller unequivocally determined was known to the Trump campaign, was welcomed by the Trump campaign, and was used by the Trump campaign. In this case, Vice President Biden's urging Ukraine to fire the Prosecutor General uh, of Ukraine, which was consistent with official US policy, it was consistent with the European Union policy. It was consistent with a bipartisan Senate uh, delegation who urged it as well, was actually bad for Burisma. And therefore, it was bad for Hunter Biden. And who should we look to to determine whether that is the case? How about Devin Archer, the star witness, who was also on the board of Burisma? Nope. Devin Archer said, that it was his understanding that Burisma had shoken the prosecutor general under control and that getting rid of him would have been bad for Burisma. And of course it was bad for Burisma because as soon as Shokin was gone, after he had allowed uh, a, a British case to lapse, the next prosecutor general came in and did start investigating the founder of Burisma. So it turned out to be exactly correct. This is why Hunter Biden wants to testify in public, is because if you had not released that transcript and we had just re uh, relied on the false representations of the majority members of this committee about what Devin Archer said, we would never have known that Devin Archer actually absolves Joe Biden of any involvement of any wrongdoing related to Hunter Biden's uh, business interests, and we would not know that this entire investigation, the public would not know that this entire investigation is a complete sham. And I yield back. Right. Uh, the minority will have four minutes. The majority has 10 minutes. I'll go first. I must oppose this amendment, but I have to state something. And I want everyone to understand this. I want everyone to understand this. A lot has been said about people on this committee running to the press during a deposition or during an interview. During the two main interviews of this impeachment inquiry investigation, the Devin Archer interview and the George Burgess interview, the very first person, the very first person on this committee to run to the reporters was none other than Dan Goldman. That is a fact. Does anyone want to dispute that right now. The very I would like you to person. identify one thing that I said that was not well, consistent well, with the transcript. You're talking about, you, you are talking Check about running to the press and, and leaking. You release the you said, well, he don't, you said uh, Hunter Biden didn't want to come because of leaks. You're the leaker. You are the leaker, Mr. Goldman. You do your now, check. You're, you I have say four the minutes truth. remaining. You this is give my false time. Information. You're out of order. You're out of order. I'll let you sit there and regurgitate your baloney for six minutes. I oppose this amendment. This amendment strikes the entire section about why Hunter Biden's testimony is necessary for the committee's legitimate oversight investigation. The amendment discusses a single deposition with Devin Archer and gets rid of all other relevant information as to why his deposition is important. The amendment distorts the reality of how the committee has handled this investigation. Devin Archer has stated publicly that claims made by the Democrats in this amendment are categorically false. Specifically, Devin Archer stated that Democrats' claims that President Biden was not involved in Hunter's businesses in any way was false. Devin Archer said that's categorically false. He said Joe Biden, quote, was aware of Hunter's business. He met with Hunter's business partners. I recommend that all members of this committee oppose this misguided amendment, and I ask to uh, submit to the record Devin Archer's interview 
uh, where he says one Democratic claim about uh, the Biden business is categorically false, and that was what uh, I just mentioned with respect to Joe's involvement, knowledge in his businesses. Without objection, so ordered. Now the, Repu the minority party has four minutes remaining. Chair recognizes Ms. Stansbury. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just very quickly want to clarify that when I mentioned that the majority had run to the press and misrepresented what happened in that interview yesterday, the point was that they misrepresented what happened in the interview. And I know that for a fact because somebody shared with me the text message that the Republican staff sent around all the members, and I also heard directly from the press what was said. So that's what we're talking about here is misrepresentation of the facts. And with that, I yield to the ranking member. Uh, thank you very much. And um, but I'm fascinated by this exchange because most committees I've been on, when the transcripts are released, um, it serves the vital function of transparency, but it also keeps people from misrepresenting and distorting the facts in advance. But if you withhold all but two transcribed interviews, I think there's something like 16 or 17 that haven't been released by the majority, then that does become an incentive to misrepresent and distort. I don't blame Mr. Goldman if he ran to the press to try to get out the true story before others go out and tell a lie about what's taking place if we're not gonna turn the transcripts over. And I wonder whether you, Mr. Chairman, could commit to turn over all of the transcribed interviews the to gentleman the yield for a question and to the Congress and to the people of the, the United ranking States of member America. Yield yes, by all means. A question? Yeah. Does the ranking member presume that his Republican colleagues intend to lie about transcripts? Um, but I you seem to have that presumption. I, no, well, I, what I will presume is based on the facts that there have been multiple distortions and misrepresentations in the in the past and the vast majority of the transcribed interviews have not been released. Someone give me the exact numbers, but I believe only two transcribed interviews out of 17 or 18 have been released. I've never seen that and, before, and, the, and I'm baffled by it. I don't understand and the, it. And the ranking member's esteemed background and, and knowledge of judicial affairs, uh, when there's ongoing investigations and multiple witnesses in complex cases, isn't it common for full transcripts to not be released? No, within it's the, not. Within the, within the parameters? No, but I, I don't think so. But in any event, we're talking about some that took place six months ago, eight months ago. Uh, but somebody's going to give me a list of how many we're talking about here. There's 17 total. Only two transcribed interviews have, had, have been released. So then it does become a race to get out to say, you know, what you think happened. Why don't we just give the people the transcribed interviews? We talk about transparency and accountability. That's the dominant theme of this committee. Isn't that something we can agree to? Will the ranking member yield for one minute? Yes, by all means. I yield. Um, I have a question for the ranking member. If it is uh, generally the practice of a, an investigator to withhold all of the transcripts during the investigative phase, um, would that normally also include releasing two of them? Well, that strikes me as odd. That does look like, uh, you know, the famed cherry picking. It's as if to say, well, two of these interviews helped us. Uh, 15 or 16 of them don't help us, so we're going to bury them someplace. So that's odd. But, I'm, but I, I want to presume the best of my colleagues, Mr. Higgins, and I'm, that's why I'm asking the chairman to explain what is the practice here. Well, you, you complain that we don't release transcripts. You complain because we do release transcripts. Honestly, we released those two transcripts because you had misrepresented so much what Devin Archer said. That's probably one reason he went on Tucker Carlson's show to call you out for misrepresenting what he said in the transcribed interview. But so you are able to get them ready. You are able to get them ready, in other words. And you found, you thought well, that it was strategically important. we have other witnesses important. to interview. You know how it works, Mr. Raskins. You're, yep. You know, you're, you're, you're playing like you don't know how this works. You're playing and trying to act like you've never done an investigation before. When you've led uh, both impeachments in the January 6th. I didn't lead the first and, impeachment, but. Um, well, I, I, I wouldn't want to admit to leading that first impeachment either. I, but, I, I, but, I would have 10 nicknames from President Trump okay. by now if I'd led right. that one. Well, but, you got, I think your all's time has pretty much expired. Does anyone on our side have anything to add? I, I don't see anything. So, who's that? Mr. Gosar. Yeah, you know, we, we talk about facts. It wasn't U.S. policy uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, do what Biden did in, in, uh, in uh, Ukraine. 
the Obama administration actually said that they, you, uh, Ukraine had complied with the law and that, that the loan should go through. Yes, they did. And that uh, the vice president changed it on an audible over, over there. So the, and the other thing I want to point out is, is if the president didn't know anything about Hunter Biden's businesses, how do you explain the 14, 15, 16, I can't remember now, how many times uh, uh, his partner actually went to the White House? How do you explain that? How do you explain this, this guy, Devin Archer, shows up at the White House? Who are you? Normally, the person's going to say, well, I'm Hunter Biden's business partner. That's typically what the average person would say. So how come he couldn't, he didn't know anything about that? Mr. Gosar, for the six people in America who are still watching or hearing, could you just explicate what you think the presidential crime is? Oh, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying right now, we're just talking about the facts. The facts here are mis mis misplayed. I mean, you complain about us, I'm going to complain about you because Would the you're gentleman distorting the facts. For one second? I'll, I'll give you a second. Mr. Gosar's time. Just, um, I, I, I'm not going to ask you to take my representation for it. I would ask you to go read the transcripts of the State Department witnesses in the first impeachment who were in the Ukraine embassy and in the State Department and were the ones who created and made the official U.S. policy who all testified that Vice President Biden was acting consistent with official U.S. policy. Okay, well, th that's not what we received. And, and when you start looking at this, you know, the courts, you know, I, I know the ranking member always goes to the courts. You know, you had a judge that actually that basically said this, this honeypot of a deal for Hunter was no good. No one was going to get that. How do you explain the slow walking, you know, by the Justice Department on the IRS claims? And, and how many people get a chance to do that? Well, with a gentleman, yield, that's yeah, a yeah. great point. And when the courts ruled against Hunter Biden, I don't think you heard a single complaint from anybody on our side of the aisle. We said, let the justice system proceed. But when the court said that the January 6th committee was validly and constitutionally composed, we still have people today who violated their subpoenas who are whining about how the committee is illegal. I mean, come on. I mean, how do you feel about that one? Could, 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 could I ask you a question about that? Yes. Just out of curiosity, what, why did you all not hold them in contempt? Hold, hold who in contempt? You, the, the people that didn't. Oh, we didn't have time at that point. Uh, I mean, we got up to the very end of the yeah, Congress. I was just wondering. But if you want to work on it now, let's no, do it. No. I, I'm, I'm totally with you, Mr. Chairman. No. Uh, so. I was just curious as to why you didn't. All right. Well, let's make it bipartisan. Everybody, I, I'd like everybody good? That We're we square? Anyone who's violated a, a... No, I was just wondering. I mean, that's a tool that, that Congress has. If someone... You've been on TV several times saying that people should honor congressional subpoenas. And, and, and I and believe when they it, don't, you hold them in contempt. Whether it's Steve Bannon, Dan Scavino, Jim Jordan, or Hunter Biden, if somebody is... But you did hold if somebody, the other two. I'm sorry? You did hold those two of those in contempt of court. We did. Well, the, Steve Bannon's been convicted by a jury, well, by a court. He's been convicted in court. And still, after. I don't think oh. we could get a single person on your side of the aisle, other than Ms. Mace, to utter a word about people who violated subpoenas in the last Congress. I mean, that's extraordinary. And all that I've been saying about Hunter Biden is he accepted what was your original offer. You didn't like that offer anymore. You put out. We, we will. We let me say this. And then uh, your time's expired yeah. and we're going to get to the vote. Hunter Biden is more than welcome to come for a hearing after the deposition. Okay, you didn't say that before, but that's cool. You, you've changed uh, the chairman. Offer. Hold on. Will you now the time is expired. There will be a when you have talked and talk will you guarantee talk. that there will be a public hearing if he were to after, come in after the after the deposition you i guarantee say right now you yes. will have a public hearing yes. with hunter biden absolutely we've said that all right yeah i know we heard a lot about public okay. hearings that have Very not good. happened the question on the amendment i don't even remember who offered the amendment miss miss crockett the question is on the crockett amendment all those in favor of the crockett amendment signify by saying i Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Recorded vote on that, please. A recorded vote is ordered as previously uh, as previously announced. Further proceedings on the question will be postponed. Pursuant to the previous order, the chair declares the committee in recess subject to the call of the chair. We will plan to reconvene in 15 minutes to get everyone together. Uh, the committee stands in recess.